Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. At Holt Plumbing and Heating, our team is clean cut, professionally dressed, and always training to be the best. We have families too, and we understand that nothing is more important than keeping them safe and comfortable. Our passion is to be the clear first choice for all your plumbing, heating, cooling, and home service needs. A high quality job with a smile and a little extra wow. I would like to personally invite you to experience Holt Plumbing and Heating and find out why for over 70 years, families all over central Iowa say, let Holt handle that. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DRM and Ford Indianola, where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. DRM and Ford. Hey, what's up? Hello. Welcome to CISN TV. Some Thursday night CIML wrestling for you guys here. I am Cody Goodwin. Might know me from the Des Moines Register, but here helping out the homies at CISN TV. Thanks for tuning in. YouTube, IA Russell, wherever you might be tuning in tonight. Got a fun one here. Dowling Catholic and Johnston Senior Night for the Maroons. Lots of high-level wrestling coming your way. Should be a really fun one tonight. Dowling Catholic... Uh, the host here, senior night, as we're seeing out there on the octagon mat with the spotlight here in the large gymnasium. Dowling Catholic ranked 14th in IA Russell's latest dual meet rankings. Johnston ranked 8th, no slouch in the Dragons. Another strong team from them tonight. Another really strong team from Dowling Catholic under first-year coach Ryak Finch. We'll be back here in just a moment to break down this duel. Uh, watching a little bit of senior night action from the Maroons. Then we'll hit intros. We'll be underway here, so we'll take a quick timeout. Be right back to talk a little bit more about this duel and what to expect tonight. Appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll see you in just a second. Two years ago, Jalen had hip surgery that required significant hardware and screw replacement, but Jalen was back on the mat in less than a year for the entire 2021 season. He's one tough dude. Jalen won. <laughs> Our next honoree, Tyrus Karstuckman, is walking with a period Brother Caleb and nephew Kevin. He's a member of St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Perry, Iowa. He plans to wrestle at Grandview University while majoring in theology. He hopes to attend graduate school where he can become a physical therapist. Kyra's overall career record at Dowling Catholic is 80 wins, 32 losses. This includes 60 bonus point victories, with 40 of them by fall. He is a two time state member. In his sophomore campaign, he placed seventh. He finished fourth as a junior. Tyler holds a 4.22 cumulative GPA. You won't find a more dedicated wrestler than Tyler Karstarpa. Our next honoree is Evan Frost. He's walking tonight with his mom, Stacy Frost, as well as his distant cousin, Jacob Frost. Not actually, they're identical twins. They both attended Holy Cross High School at Moore Range prior to their senior years at Dolly Catholic. Next year, Evan and Jacob plan to study engineering and wrestle for Columbia University in New York, an Ivy League school, where they both will be on academic scholarships. The family belongs to St. Anthony's Church in Des Moines. If you want to figure out which brother is which, you're going to need a ruler. 
The only obvious difference between the two, Jacob is 1.63852 inches taller than Evan. Evan and Jacob Cross. Thank you to the two men and team for their continued support during the season. They are the source of never ending energy and spirit. Another, another huge thank you to our managers, Bethany Wiley, Kate, Caroline, and Alyssa, who keep wrestlers in line. The team would be lost without the organization and behind the scene work. The parents, in one final word, the parents and wrestlers would like to congratulate and thank the coaching staff on its successful first season. These are the guys putting in the hustle behind the muscle. Coaches, please step to the middle of the mat to be acknowledged. Ryan Fitch. Tyler Nolan. Chad Nolan. Andrew Clark. Brett Turner. And Trevor Wilker. We are blessed to have them as role models and coaches. Our boys have not only grown as wrestlers, but also as men under their leadership. Tommy Pavlik is in good hands. Thank you. Great job, everyone. Hey, what's up? Hello. Welcome back. I guess we never really left watching the uh, senior night ceremonies here at Dowling Catholic High School. We've got the Maroons. We've got the Johnston Dragons. Going to be a fun one here tonight. Seven ranked wrestlers on both of these teams. Uh, rankings from IA Russell. Lots of really fun matchups coming tonight. Three that I have my eye on. 120 pounds where we'll see Dowling's John King ranked 11th at 120 pounds against Johnston's Joshua Angelo ranked number nine. Two guys pretty even there in the polls. We'll kind of see how they square up. 138 pounds. Very excited for this one. Jacob Frost, you just heard. Um, honored tonight for senior night for Dallin Catholic. Ranked second at 138. He'll wrestle Jacob Helgeson, very talented freshman. Ranked fifth at 138 pounds. This all by IA Russell again. Third match that I'm looking forward to tonight, 170 pounds. Adam Townsend, another senior, ranked 12th by IA Russell. He will wrestle Johnston Sam Zindel, sixth ranked wrestler, at 170 pounds. Those are three that I'm really looking forward to. I think looking at this duel overall, a couple of the matches that we're going to want to keep a pretty heavy eye on, 182 and 195 pounds. 182, 195, I consider both of those to be the toss-up matchups tonight. Those are, you know, can either of these teams uh, win one of those or both of those, as well as some of these bigger matchups to, you know, potentially swing the duel in their favor. Those are things that I'm going to be keeping an eye on tonight. Another thing to also keep an eye on, a couple of forfeits for both squads here tonight. Dowling posting on their uh, lineup sheets here that they are open at 145 and 160 pounds. Um, so that's automatic 12 points for Johnston. Johnston posting a couple of forfeits as well at 113 and at heavyweight, but something to keep in mind, they brought two 106 pounders, Caden Leonard, who's ranked fourth at 106, as well as Shandrill Thompson. Uh, maybe one of those guys will bump up to 113 to fill that spot. And then they also brought two wrestlers at 220, Ian Dolan and Caden Long. Perhaps we see one of them bump up to heavyweight and wrestle Dowling's Carson Hagen. So a lot to watch here tonight between the Maroons, between Johnston. We're going through intros right now. We're going to take another quick timeout. By the time we come back, we will be watching some wrestling, senior night wrestling here at Dowling Catholic High School. The Maroons, the Dragons. I'm your boy Cody Goodwin. We will be right back with some wrestling.
Right to it. Nobody does meat like Fairway. Nobody. And if you're somebody who wants to become a master, we've got hats to fill. Quality pay, choice benefits, premium opportunities. There's more in store for you at Fairway. Why do businesses succeed? The Better Business Bureau sees the traits of successful businesses every day. It's not easy, but it is simple. The BBB fosters trust between Iowa businesses and consumers. Visit BBB.org. Central Bank opened its doors in 1877 and has been proud to call Iowa home ever since. For more than a century, our family-owned business has worked hand-in-hand -hand with friends and neighbors across the state to make their dreams a reality. Come visit us at our new location on Hickman and Waukee and see how Central Bank can make it happen for you. Hey, what's up? Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. CISN TV as well as on Rockfin through IA Russell. You are looking live at some CIML Thursday Night Wrestling. Dallin Catholic High School here to watch the Maroons. Russell Johnston High School. I am Cody Goodwin. You might know me through the Des Moines Register, and I'm going to be with you here through the evening. Appreciate you guys tuning in wherever you might be tuning in from. Kind of broke down the duel a little bit before the last break. Really fun one here. Johnston ranked 8th in IA Russell's latest dual meet rankings. John, or Dowling Catholic ranked 14th. If you go by tournament rankings, Johnston, don't believe they've cracked the top 10 yet. Dowling ranked 8th. Of course, we all know the difference between a uh, tournament ranking, dual meet ranking. We're, we're, we're here for a dual meet tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun going to start at 152 pounds. That's going to be Dowling Catholic's Max Dirks, Johnston's Braden Black Orby. Get the intro music rolling. Underneath the spotlight here on Dowling's very unique octagon mat. It's like a massive stop sign just down there on, on top of the basketball court. It's going to be a fun one, and we're underway here. 152, Johnston's Braden Black Orby, ranked number sixth at the weight. 
by I. A. Russell. He's immediately in on a shot, runs through Dirks. Ref says, nope, and we will start again. I don't know about you guys, but I really love the spotlight for duels like this. Actually, I had one at my old high school. Just kind of creates a unique atmosphere, gives the guys a stage to kind of rustle on a little bit. Black Orby, really good. Really good awareness there. Initially tried for a pick. Was able to get Dirks off balance, runs around for two. Now he's breaking him down. One thing about Braden Black Orby, if you haven't watched him rustle, he's a hammer on top. And we're seeing him go to work immediately. Has a bar, has a half. He's going to run it over, or he's going to try at least, to see if he can get it. Very quickly going to work. That does not look very comfortable. You can see it on the stream tonight. Max Dirks can't be uh, can't be feeling too good at the moment. Braden Black Orby hanging on to the bar. Long and lanky Braden Black Orby. Trying to decide whether, whether to run the bar or whether to run the half. Looks like he bails on the bar, but hangs on to the half. Let's see what he does with it. 40 seconds left here in this first period. That takedown, the only point scored so far. Locks up the bar again, has another half, trying to roll him over. Give Dirk some credit, man. He's kept his hips flat to the mat, not, not giving up points yet. That does not look any bit comfortable. Ref giving swipes. I saw maybe two. Let's see what he gives. Giving absolutely nothing. Black Orby goes the other way this time. Going to run up against the clock here. We'll see if he can get it. That's tight. Pin for Braden Black Orby in a minute 58 seconds. Tried to run the bar shoulder into his head. Instead goes the opposite direction. Sucks Dirk's back. Gets the pin. Six zero lead for Johnston immediately becomes twelve zero because, as we mentioned earlier, Dowling open at one hundred and sixty pounds. So Kaya Fox for Johnston will pick up the forfeit there. So six zero becomes twelve zero Johnston after the first two weights, and we will move on to one seventy where we will see our first Dowling senior of the night, Adam Townsend. He will wrestle Sam Zindel from Johnston. This should be a good one, folks. Townsend ranked 12th at 170 by I.A. Russell. Zindel ranked 6th, so ranked matchup here at 170. Second match of the night, third weight, and away we go. If you're Johnston, you got to be feeling pretty good about Black Orby getting that pin to start off. Following it up with the forfeit. 12-0 lead out of the gate. Still a lot of rustling left tonight. Zindel in on a shot. Single leg. Picks up Townsend's right leg. Takes him down to the mat. Tries a crackdown technique. Townsend doing a good job keeping his hips over Zindel's head. We'll see if he can continue to fight this. He does so far. Breaks Zindel's grip. Ref says we're a little too close to the edge. Let's restart in the middle. About 50 seconds into this first period. Good action there. There's a really nice shot by Zindel. Just getting to the leg. And there's another really good double leg shot. But good hips again from Townsend. Kind of break him down. Zindel switching to a single. Townsend doing a really good job of just covering Zindel, keeping his head low not allowing him to kind of build up into a potential finish on that shot. Might see a stalemate here soon. Townsend working on hands. On, Ref will call stalemate. 34 seconds left here in this scoreless first period. We're at 170. Excellent crowd in here tonight. Awesome crowd made the drive down from Johnston. Dowling, of course, excellent contingent here to celebrate senior night. And we got a fun one here at 170. 20 seconds left in this first period. Zindel got in on a couple of shots early. Not able to finish, though. Heavy hips from Adam Townsend. Denied him those opportunities. We'll see how this final 10 seconds go.
Looks like we will take a scoreless match into the second period. Here at 170 pounds. This is one of those ranked matchups where probably think Zindel's the favorite. But, uh, you know, hey, on senior night, in front of the home crowd, underneath the spotlight, anything could happen, right? So scoreless first period. Townsend will start the second on down. He's immediately up. Breaks free and away, 1-0 lead. And away we go. Another really good shot from Zindel, and he is able to capitalize that time. Excellent level change into a double leg. Third time's the charm. He gets the finish for a 2-1 lead. 30 seconds here into this second period. Townsend back up very quickly, working hands. And he's out to tie it 2-2. Zindel in again on another shot, another double leg. Quick finishes now working for Sam Zindel as he now takes a 4-2 lead. Two takedowns in the second period here after going 0-2 in the first. Don't know if they were adjustments as much as just kind of fully executing there. Townsend up and out again. About 55 seconds left here in the second period. A 4-3 lead now for Zindel. Excellent execution there on those double legs. Now Townsend takes a double leg shot of his own, runs out of real estate. We run out of bounds. Restart with about 45 seconds left here in the second period. Zindel in another shot again. Met with some heavy hips, but adjusts into a single leg, picks it up, and puts Townsend on his hip. Another takedown there for Sam Zindel. Excellent second period here as he now leads 6-3, to three, under 30 seconds to go in this second period. He seems content to uh, try and ride out here. No, nope. Townsend up and out again. Give Townsend credit, he has answered every time. Zendel again, single leg shot, kind of collided. Zendel kept his stance low. Ten seconds left to see if he can finish. Adam Townsend with heavy hips, able to extend Zendel a little bit. Tries to break the grip, he does not. So we will head to the third period, six to four now in favor of Sam Zendel. Take a quick look at the replay here. Check this out, initial takedown from Zendel, just level change into a single. This was the third takedown, excuse me. Looks like he was going for a double again, switches off to a single leg, able to pick Townsend up, put him on his hip, excellent finish there. Three takedowns from Sam Zendel, and he's very quickly up and out now. Seven to four lead at the beginning of the third period. Able to execute his offense very well in neutral in that second period after going 0-2 again in the first period. Goes again, level change, able to sneak his head out underneath. What looks like another takedown for Zendel. Ref hasn't called it yet, there it is. Make that 9-4 now, Sam Zendel with the lead. You gotta think, 90 seconds left, you're up by five. You've been able to figure out your offense from neutral. Does he let him up? Let Townsend up and maybe try to go for some bonus points here if he's able to get a few more takedowns. Townsend up and out again, 9-5 to five now. Let's see what Zindel can do. Townsend's got him cornered near the edge. We are going to stop for some blood time. 68 seconds left in this match. Sam Zindel, four takedowns now. Looking at a replay here. First takedown in the third period. Looked like he level changed again into a double. Townsend met him with some heavy hips, but Zendel very quick to get his head out to the outside, drive through for the takedown. His fourth of the match. Clearly figured something out in that second period and has been able to finish four of his last five shots or so between the second and third period. And he's got a 9-5 lead. So again, kind of curious here. Zendel up four. 68 seconds left. You've been able to score some takedowns with relative efficiency. Can you keep it going and maybe score a bonus? It'd be huge for the Dragons here after scoring 16 points back-to-back -back matches. Zindel again on that double leg. Just real quick underneath to finish. 11 to five now and he is, he's smelling blood. Let's see if he can go get some more. Townsend up and out. 11 to six here. 
up by five. Townsend in on a shot himself. Zindel meets him with some heavy hips, and as Thompson comes out, Townsend comes out, excuse me, Zindel in on a single. A little extended, though. We'll see if he can finish this. Ref letting him work for a little bit, calls a stalemate. We'll restart, 30 seconds left here in the match. 11-6, Sam Zendel. Up by five, gonna need a couple more takedowns or perhaps feet to back, if he can get it. Let's see what's up. Another shot there from Zendel, clearly the aggressor here. Little extended, heavy hips there from Adam Townsend. Zendel trying to stay square. Townsend continuing to work. Not sure that he's going to get the two before the end of this match here, but excellent stuff there. Second and third period from Sam Zendel. Five takedowns and an 11-6 win over Adam Townsend. Three more team points for Johnston. That puts them up 15-0 after three weights. We are now headed to 182. One of the more intriguing matchups that I thought we would see tonight. 182, Johnston's Will Scott, Caden Marceau from Dowling Catholic. A little bit of a toss-up here. Can Johnston continue the role that they have started this duel on? Or can Dowling finally stop the bleeding a little bit, get on the scoreboard here? And we're underway here at 182. Nothing first 15 seconds in. A little bit of hand fighting early. Nice little step and fake there from Scott. Some collar ties, some hand fighting. Another nice little level change there from Scott. First minute in, no real attacks yet. More dancing than rustling, but he's in their way into the match. Nice little shot there from Scott, but good stuff there from Marceau to stuff him to evade danger. 50 seconds left, now we're rustling a little bit. Let's see what we can do here. Well, Scott's got him just outside the center of the mat. Contact, break, contact, break. Clearly these guys are feeling each other out. 30 seconds left here in this first period. Window of opportunity was there. Did not pull the trigger. Final 15 here in this first period. There's a little shot there from Marceau. Actual shot there from Will Scott. Can he finish here before the end of the period? Marceau's got him extended. Oh, goes in for the reshot. That was that was some nice stuff there. Nice little flurry action there at the end of a scoreless first period. Started dancing, ended rustling, headed to the second. Will Scott will start down. Perhaps we will see some points soon. Stay tuned. Scott is up with relative ease, and he's out in four seconds for a 1-0 lead. Let's see if uh, Marceau can answer now. A little bit of hand fighting, a little bit more contact. Let's see if Scott can go back to some of those level changes. There's a nice little level change there from Marceau, kind of a half attempt. Level change. We know these guys can wrestle when they were committing to attacks there at the end of the first period. They were uh, some nice little flurries there. So let's see if one of them will pull the trigger now. Scott, nice little shot. Good little step out there from Marceau. Midway through the second period. It's good action reaction there. Can appreciate that. Good clubs, hand fighting, 
Attempting a two-on-one, fighting for wrist control. Not sure this is a waltz, but it's close. Coming up on 30 seconds left here in the second period. Will Scott from Johnston, a 1-0 lead, thanks to an escape at the beginning of this period. Not a lot of attacks, but the last uh, 15 seconds of the first, we saw some fun flurries, and there's Will Scott there. Nice little shuck, found an angle, scored a takedown. 3-0 lead. Caden Mar, that was a very interesting sequence there from the official. I don't know that Marceau ever fully, completely broke control, but he awarded an escape to Marceau. Scott able to hang on to the foot, score a two for takedown. So the score says five to one in favor of Will Scott. Dowling coach Ryak Finch would like a word at the head table. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure that I would have given the one there, but there's a reason I'm up here and not down there. Let's take a quick look at the replay while they're talking. This was Will Scott's takedown coming up here. Nice little shuck to create an angle. That was excellent stuff. A little late trying to run it down, but did enough. Able to score two there. And here's kind of what's going on. Not sure Scott fully uh, gets an escape there, but let's check out this replay while we're waiting. He's got control. Not sure Marceau ever fully gets away because as soon as he's able to break ties, Scott drops to a single, but the ref awards one. Marceau finishes, so then because he awarded him one, he had to award him two. And it looks like we just got a change on the scoreboard, so it doesn't look like Marceau ultimately got away. Shout out to the ref for correcting his mistake there. We know things can happen pretty quick on the wrestling mat. So a 3-0 lead for Johnston's Will Scott as we begin the third period here at 170 pounds. 82 pounds, excuse me. We already wrestled 170. Will Scott, a nice little ride there. Nice mat return. Right on top of the cat. Shane Sparks would appreciate that. 30 seconds into this third period. 182, crucial swing bout so far going Johnston's way. Will Scott escape at the beginning of the second period, take down at the end of the second period, and he has a 2-0 lead. He's going to run Caden Marceau out of bounds. We will restart in the middle with 79 seconds left in this match. Nice little ankle drive there. Well, Kind of picked the ankle and then drove him forward from Will Scott. Continuing to ride hard here as we approach the midway point of this third period. For Caden Marceau, some urgency here. And that's good stuff there from Will Scott. Hanging on to his leg to kind of follow the, you know, he attempted to kind of clear ties there and he did, but Will Scott, very savvy there to pick the leg up, drive him right back down to the mat. 45 seconds left here in this third period. Caden Marceau, got to show a little bit of urgency here. Build back up, fight for some hand control. You're only down three. That's an escape and a takedown. We go to sudden victory. But Will Scott, very mean ride here on the edge of the mat. See where the ref lets him go. We'll restart in the middle. 29 and a half seconds left here at 182. We appreciate some good edge wrestling, so that's two bonuses from the official tonight. We always appreciate their hard work. Another little ankle ride there from Will Scott as we hit 20 seconds to go. Caden Marceau running out of time. Marceau up and out, three to one now, 15 seconds to go. What kind of magic can he come up with? A lot of hand fighting in on a shot. Can he pull it in? Scott's got him extended. We're under five. It looks like Scott's going to keep him covered very big. Three to one win for Will Scott at 182 pounds. The hot start for Johnston keeps going. Three more team points makes it an 18 to zero lead. Eighteen zero lead for Johnson now as we head to 195 pounds. Another one of those matchups that I thought would kind of be a toss-up coming in. So far, everything's been all dragons so far. Fifth weight of the night here, 195. Tommy Bakken from Dowling Catholic. Jackson Brinker 
from Johnston. We'll see if the Dragons can keep this hot start rolling or if Dowling can stop the bleeding a little bit and maybe get on the board. And Jackson Brinker says, no, sir. Runs a knee pick all the way to the edge, and he's got him flat on his back. Ref calls them out of bounds. I'm not sure he even awarded any back points there. A little confusing. Let's see what happens. That was a wild 11-second opener. Ref's going to go to the table to double-check that. Excellent start here. Let's take a look at this quick replay. Jackson Brinker not playing games tonight. Immediately shakes hands. Nice little club. Kind of a duck. Finds an angle. Grabs the knee. Runs him over. Has him flat on his back. Ref would have been in position there. May have been called a pin. Jackson Brinker now going for a cradle. Result of that stoppage was a 4-0 lead for Jackson Brinker. And he's looking for more. He wants this to be done quick. And it's done. 25 second pin for Jackson Brinker. We're going to take a look at this replay. Jackson Brinker not here to play games, ladies and gentlemen. Check this out. Breakdown immediately right off the restart. Locks up a cradle. Just settles in for the fall. 25 seconds. Excellent stuff there. Six more team points for Johnston, 24-0 lead for the Dragons after the first five weights. We move now on to 220, Dowling Catholics, Ralston Rumley. Twenty here, sixth weight of the night. Did not actually hear who Johnston sent out on the mat tonight, so we will wait and listen for the parents, see who they're rooting for. But we're scoreless here, about 25 seconds in. Rumley working near the edge. Circles back toward the center. Nice head outside shot there from Ralston Rumley. Can he finish there near the edge? Has him in rear standing. Looking to pick him up, and he does. Woo, man. Excellent takedown there for two, and Rumley runs him over for the pin. Dowling Catholic is on the board. Take a look at this replay. Excellent mat return here. Lifts all in the hips, ladies and gentlemen. Flattens him down there on the mat. Quickly runs a half Nelson. Scores the pin in 54 seconds for Dowling Catholic. And just like that, energy in the gym has changed. 24 to 6 lead now for Johnston. But Dowling, excellent response there from their eighth ranked 220 pounder in Ralston Rumley. We head now to 285 where. Actually, before we go to heavyweight, it looks like Johnston's coaches are going to have a word with the official. And we are going to take a quick break with them. You are listening to CIML Wrestling on CISN TV. We are going to take a short break. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and you've probably noticed there's shortages on most everything in the market today. Well, Heat & Glow has helped us out this year, and they are focusing their energy on their gas fireplace inserts. So if you've got a drafty old wood-burning fireplace, and you want to get it retrofitted into a beautiful, high-efficient gas fireplace, come see us. We will have product to sell you. Heat & Glow Gas Fireplace Insert from Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas in Urbandale, just west of Homemakers. Welcome back to Dallin Catholic High School. Some CIML wrestling on your Thursday night here on CISN TV, as well as I wrestle on Rockfin. Cody Goodwin here bringing you the action. Dallin Catholic and Johnston. Johnston raced out to a 24-0 lead through the first five weights. 
but it just takes two, and Dallin Catholic right back in at a big pin from Ralston Rumley at 220, and then Carson Hagen accepting a forfeit at 285. Just like that, 24 to 12 Johnston as we go to the turn back to the top of the lineup. 106 pounds, Wyatt Heffron from Dallin Catholic. He will be wrestling Shandrell Thompson here at 106. And this kind of became a weight that's, uh, you know, throw it in there with those toss-up big matchups that either team could use if they want to win tonight's duel. First handful of toss-up matches or have gone Johnston's way, able to get a big win at 182 from Will Scott. Another big win from Sam Zindel at 170, winning a ranked matchup. Jackson Brinker, not sure that was the toss-up. We thought it was at the beginning, comes out quick with a very very efficient first period pin at 195, helping Johnston again race it out to a big lead. But Dowling now back in the thick of it, 24 to 12, as we start here at 106. Again, Shandrell Thompson from Johnston, Wyatt Heffron from Dowling Catholic would lead me to believe, and they said this in the intros, Caden Leonard, fourth ranked 106 pounder in the state, class 3A using IA Russell's rankings. He will bump to 113 and Russell Sev Soto from Dallin Catholic. We will get to that match up next. Right now we're at 106, 45 seconds in. We're scoreless, but we are hand fighting. Excellent shot there from Wyatt Heffron. Picks up the leg. Let's see what he can do here. Thompson, very lanky 106 pounder. Makes you think he's going to grow quite a bit, but a wonderful finish there from Wyatt Heffron for an early 2 0 lead. We'll cross the halfway mark of the first period. Nice little ride here from Wyatt Heffron following the takedown. Doing a good job working wrists, not allowing Thompson to maintain his base to potentially come up for an escape. Under 20 seconds to go here in this first period. Heffron wanting to use that half Nelson, whips Thompson back to the mat, doing a really good job of just following Thompson as he continues to move, doing a really good job of staying active on bottom, just not able to fully build his base up. It'll be Wyatt Heffron taking a 2-0 lead into the second period. We're here at 106. Eighth weight, 14 tonight. Started at 152. Means we will end at, technically we'll end at 138 because at 145, Dowling is open. So you can add another six points to Johnston's score. But a lot of wrestling left here. Dowling, very talented lightweights coming up. If they're going to get back into the duel. It's going to be this stretch here over the next few weights. Starting the second period, Shandrell Thompson's going to start on top. Nice little mat return. And he's running a bar. Let's see if he can use it, or at least he was attempting to. Now he's back to work and wrists. First 20 seconds here of this first period, and he attempted a cradle. Heffron stands up, and he may scramble his way to a reversal. Doesn't quite have it yet. Thompson's going to come out with a half Nelson. That was some excellent wrestling right there. Thompson trying to use his length on a cradle. Heffron stands up. Looked like he was about to get a reversal, but again, Thompson's length. Hanging on that half Nelson takes him all the way to the edge. And we will restart in the center. Efron able to get away. Thompson drops to a knee. 3-0 lead now for Dowling's Wyatt Heffron. After that escape. Thompson looking for an underhook. Heffron says, no, thank you. I'll take this sweep single. See if he can use it. Tries to cut across to a double. Hooks the leg back to a single. It's kind of the weird thing about wrestling long and lanky guys. It's kind of like you're just constantly climbing limbs. But Heffron does a really good job. Kind of a crackdown position there. Has both legs. Head underneath, though. Thompson again. That length coming in handy. Thompson's going to end up with the takedown here. Some more excellent wrestling here, 106 pounds. 
Thought Heffron might have had the two there, but give Thompson credit, able to keep his head down, scramble his way for two points of his own. Now a 3-2 lead, Wyatt Heffron here. Big 15 seconds coming up here at the end of this second period. How can Heffron respond, or can Thompson keep him on the mat? Thompson's going to do more than keep him on the mat. He's got a cradle locked up. Heffron changes. Ref given sort of counting. Not sort of counting. Told you that last 15 seconds are going to be huge, ladies and gentlemen. Chandrell Thompson scores two out of a scramble and is able to rock a cradle back on Heffron here. We're watching the replay. Takes him back. Heffron immediately kicks, but give Thompson credit. Able to kind of maintain Heffron's hips just enough to keep him in danger. Quick two near fall. And what was a 3-0 Wyatt Heffron lead becomes a 4-3 Chandrell Thompson lead. Excuse me, it's now 4-4 as we start the third. Looked like the ref might have given Heffron an escape for lack of control there at the end of the second period. But nonetheless, we have a whole different match now. Thompson escapes. First 20 seconds here of the third period. Now Chandrell Thompson, a 5-4 lead. And we got an exciting finish coming up here, folks, in what is a pretty big weight with regards to this duel. Johnston doing a good job of winning the key matchups here so far tonight. But Dowling has won the last two, one by fall, one by forfeit. Can Heffron perhaps get one here? But Shandrell Thompson goes slide by. Ooh, that was slick. Chandrell Thompson, a nice little slide by for two takedown and what is now a 7-4 lead. This young man down 3-0 in the second has outscored Wyatt Heffron 7-1 since then. And as we approach a minute left in this third period, he's running a half. Nelson, could he perhaps get more? Whew, man, that does not look comfortable. He's getting more. Ref is swiping, and he's going to stop the match. I don't understand why, but I guess we'll find out. Two back points there for Shandrell Thompson. Now a 9-4 lead. Still confused why the match was stopped. In any case, we will restart with Heffron on bottom. Not sure I fully agree with that call, but I'm all about keeping the athletes safe here. 9-4 lead now for Shandrell Thompson. He was down 3-0 in the second period and has just erupted here in this second half of the match. Firmly in control here. Heffron to his feet. He's going to have to work a little quicker if he wants this one. Thompson not having any of it. As we hit 30 seconds left in this match. Continuing to work wrist. This is a really good right here from Thompson. And he's going to get even more back points. Ref holding two. Thompson wants more. The ref is swiping, still holding two. As we're under 10 now, Thompson might be thinking bonus points here, ladies and gentlemen, if he can get them. Ref continuing to hold two. A quick reversal there for Wyatt Heffron at the end of the match is going to end a wild bout here at 106 pounds. But the final score... Shandrell Thompson, 11, Wyatt Heffron, 6. A huge win for the Johnston Dragons. Excellent match there from Shandrell Thompson. Fighting back from down 3-0 to win 11-6. Very crucial swing bout for Johnston, who now leads 27-12 as we head to 113. 113 pounds. Initially, Johnston was open, but they are going to bump Caden Leonard up from 106 to 113. Caden Leonard ranked number four in the state at 103 in Class 3A. That's according to I.A. Russell. He will be wrestling Sev Soto, who's ranked 11th at 113. And what was maybe on paper six points for Dowling Catholic is now a very, very intriguing match tonight. We are underway here at 113. Feeling each other out there. Leonard in on a quick shot. Soto covers. Looks like he's going to come into a reshot of his own. Leonard covers. Breaks free. Good defense there. Some great action in this first 30 seconds. 
you're just tuning in, we appreciate it. Welcome to CIML Wrestling on CISN TV. I am Cody Goodwin here guiding you through this duel, Dowling Catholic versus Johnston, senior night for the Maroons, but it has been a lot of dragon victories so far, 27 to 12 here in favor of Johnston as we hit 113 pounds. We started at 152, and tell you what, Johnston raced out to a 24-0 lead before Dowling was able to get on the board thanks to a pin from Ralston Rumley at 220 and then a forfeit from Carson Hagen at heavyweight. It has been all Johnston otherwise. A pin from Braden Blackwarby, a pin from Jackson Brinker, uh, forfeit at 160, and then a handful of really big wins from Sam Zindel at 170, Will Scott at 182, and just now we saw a very exciting one, Chandrell Thompson at 106. Now we're at 113. Been a great night of wrestling so far here under the spotlight here at Dowling Catholic High School. We got a fun one here. Caden Leonard from Johnston. Sev Soto from Dowling Catholic. Leonard, normally a 106 pounder. Soto, definitely a 113 pounder. Leonard says, I'm going to bump. We're going to have some fun tonight. We're scoreless here. 20 seconds left in this first period. Good hand fighting there on the edge. Leonard tries a little bit of a duck there. Soto's got his head locked up. Leonard says no. Can he cover for the two? Not sure he's got full control there before the end of the period. We will go to the second period scoreless. Johnston parents here not entirely happy about that call. Let's check out the replay really quick. See here a nice little kind of a duck under action there. Maybe sort of kind of from Leonard, maybe an elbow pass, but Soto using his length, wraps around Leonard's head, tries to throw him off. Leonard doing a good job of floating his hips over, but just doesn't get full control there before the end of the period. I like that no call there from the ref. We start the second period scoreless. Leonard, we will start on bottom. Good ride initially here from Soto through the first 10 seconds. Thirty seconds in now. Nice little ride here from Sev Soto, and this is when you bump up from 106 to 113. I know seven pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but it makes quite a bit of difference in the sport of wrestling. And Soto did a really good job riding, but give Leonard credit. Popped his hips out, is able to break the lock, and he's out for a 1-0 lead after Soto kind of working on what looked like a three-quarter Nelson there. But instead, it's Leonard getting the escape. As we hit the midway part here, the second period, Soto went on a shot, using that length to his advantage, pulling in Leonard's left leg. Can he finish? And he does. 2-0 lead, or 2-1 lead, excuse me. Seb Soto of Dowling Catholic, and he's got Leonard flat. And this is kind of like what I was talking about. The, the seven pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but in wrestling it can be quite a bit. Soto definitely... A little bit of a size advantage here, but Leonard, very game. He's up for it. He's got his hips up and out, but Soto doing a really good job sitting on Leonard's left ankle. Johnston coach Aaron Tecklenburg would like a stall call since he's not really doing anything with it. Not sure I'd hand that one out yet, but something to monitor a little bit. Tecklenburg getting closer to the table. We've reached under 20 here in this second period. Leonard doing a good job getting his hips up. Can he break the lock and get his ankle free and he does up and out again another escape with 10 seconds left that is a huge escape there from Caden Leonard ties it at 2-2 Sev Soto a couple of fake steps in on a shot as the second period ends 2-2 two two here at 113 we will head to the third period Sev Soto says I want to wrestle on my feet We'll see what this last two minutes has in store. 2-2 two -two here. A couple of escapes from Caden Leonard, a takedown sandwich between them from Sev Soto. He's got to be liking what he's feeling from neutral. Fifteen seconds in here. Nice shot there from Leonard. Better defense there from Sev Soto. Johnston crowd wants a stall call. Not sure they're going to get it. Soto using double unders. Takes him all the way to the edge. Pushes him out. 
We will restart. 94 seconds left in this match. This is a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Shot there from Leonard. Gets to the leg. Pulls it in. He's got it in the air. Can he finish? Attempts to finish. Got a little extended there, but hangs on to the other leg now. Soto, that length coming in handy. Leonard finishes for the takedown. That is some excellent, just gritty stuff there from Caden Leonard. Nice shot. Got a little extended. Switched to a single. Picked it up. Tried for the initial finish, got extended, came back on the other leg, picked it up, able to get a really nice finish there. We got a 4-2 lead here for Caden Leonard. 60 seconds left in this match at 113. And he's riding hard here. Soto up to his base. He's gonna have to get out and get back in neutral, but Leonard doing a good job of just following hips. Roll out of bounds, we will restart. 48 seconds left. Again, Caden Leonard from Johnston, normally a 106 pounder. Top five 106 pounder in class 3A. Rustlin 113 tonight against Dowling Sev Soto, who again, no slouch. He's a top 12 wrestler himself, ranked number 11 by I.A. Russell to Sev Soto. Oh, looked like he was about to hit a uh, Peterson there. Just excellent chain wrestling there from Cade, Caden Leonard. Staying active, moving from one sequence to the next, never resting, and is able to keep covered Rolls back through, no points scored. An excellent ride here from Caden Leonard after scoring a takedown for the lead. We're about 20 seconds left here in this third period. Another big time win for Johnson if Leonard can hang on to this one. We've reached 10 seconds left. He's got Soto flat, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very good performance here from Caden Leonard from Johnston. Four to two winner over Sev Soto. Excellent match there, young Caden Leonard bumping up. Let's go check out that match winning takedown one more time, here's the replay. Check this out, initial shot, he gets a little extended on the finish, so then we pick up here, he picks up Soto's other leg, very clean finish that time, covers the hip, scores two, that was midway through the third period. Like all great wrestlers, Caden Leonard able to ride out the rest of the way for the win. Big match there, big match victory there for the Johnston Dragons, who are now up 30 to 12 after nine matches here at Dowling Catholic High School. We move on to 120. Another fun one here, Dowling Catholic's John King against Johnston's Joshua Anglo. Another ranked matchup here. Anglo ranked number nine by IA Russell in Class 3A. King ranked number 11. Both at 120 pounds. 20 seconds in. A little bit more dancing than rustling, but here comes King trying to find an angle. Joshua Anglo doing, trying to use some quick steps, some fakes, some level changes. Got a brace on his left shoulder. We'll see how that affects him. Goes in for kind of a, uh, look like he went left to right there, trying to misdirection shot there, but King not fooled. Covers and we're back up in neutral. About a minute here left in this first period. Another level change there from Anglo, fighting hands. King in on a shot, can he pick it up and finish? Good hips there from Anglo. We might see a stalemate here before too long. King says, I'll just back out myself and we'll try again. Another little misdirection shot there from Anglo. This time he's able to pop up and cover. See if he can use this to his advantage. He's got King's elbow. King shucks by. We're back neutral. This is, <laughs> this is some good action even though we're scoreless and haven't seen a whole lot of true shots yet. Maybe a couple shots here and there, but... No points on the board left. About 20 seconds left here in this first period. Loving the action I'm seeing here so far. Two top 12 guys at 120 pounds. Dowling Catholic, Johnston High School. King trying for an elbow pass, not gonna get it. We will end the first period scoreless. John King, Joshua Anglo, second period. Upcoming at 120 pounds. And once we make a decision, 
Anglo will start the second period on bottom. King covers, we're up and away. Anglo fighting hands. Can he get out quick? And he squares up, 10 seconds in. We got an escape, 1-0. And immediately King right back in on a shot, covers for two. Right there near the edge, that was great stuff there. In on a leg now, you're kind of losing Anglo's hips there near the edge. But the takedown stands, so John King up 2-1 now, not even 30 seconds into this second period. We will restart here the same way we started the second period. Anglo on bottom, King on top. Caution. We'll go again. Anglo again, up and fighting hands. Excellent little mat return there from John King. Little pop of the hips up and down. Anglo again, back up to his base though, doing a good job fighting hands. King this time catches him in a tilt. Nothing there. Ref may have missed a quick two if he was in position. At least Dowling coach Ryak Finch was hoping that he would. Instead, Anglo continues to fight hands up and out again. 2-2 two -two now with a minute left here in this second period. A shot there from Anglo, but he's met with an underhook from John King. Some great action reaction wrestling from these guys when they get in positions like this, but King doing a good job covering. See if anything will come of it in a front head position here. King trying to race around and he does cover. That looks like two and he might have a cradle here, ladies and gentlemen, here it is. John King from Dallin Catholic. There's the pin, three minutes. 34 seconds, a huge pin there at 120 for Dowling Catholic. Huge pin there for the Maroons. That makes it 30 to 18. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with 126 pounds. You're watching CIML Wrestling on CISN TV. Old Plumbing Heating continues to be one of Central Iowa's fastest growing plumbing, heating, and cooling companies. I'm reminded of that every day as I see our fleet of vehicles in all shapes and sizes head out to help customers in need. We work hard to keep our vehicles clean and in good shape. Some are customized with great ideas and some maybe not so much. But at the end of the day, a job well done and a happy customer means everything to us. Just one more reason why more and more Central Iowans are saying, let Holt handle that. Welcome back to CIML Wrestling on a Thursday night here. Dallin Catholic High School wrestling the Johnston Dragons. I'm Cody Goodwin here bringing you through the night. We're here at 126 pounds now. Dominic Quinn from Dallin Catholic. Noah Madison from Johnston. Quinn in on a low-level single shot. See if he can come out and finish. Madison doing a good job covering. Quinn continuing to fight. Hooks the leg there. Can he use that to his advantage? We're all limbs here in this weird scramble. Madison doing a good job avoiding and scoring two of his own. That was an excellent scramble there from Noah Madison. And now he'll go to work on top as we hit the midway point of this first period. If you're just now tuning in, four matches left here in this duel. Johnston with a 30 to 18 lead. They raced out to a 24-0 lead. Started at 152 pounds. Braden Blackwarby got a first period pin. Jackson Brinker followed with a pin at 195. Johnson also the benefit of a forfeit at 160. A handful of big wins here and there. Dowling charged back with a pin from Ralston Rumley at 220. Forfeit win from Car for Carson Hagen at 285. And then a huge pin before the break here. John King at 120 pounds. That brings us to 30 to 18 with four matches left. Dominic Quinn though. Might be thinking bonus points of his own and reversal against Noah Madison. Unclear if uh, unclear if the official, the official is holding two back points. So Quinn, two for the reversal, two for the back points. Madison gets the escape for lack of control. Excellent opening, minute 45 seconds here in this first period. Four to three, the lead for Dominic Quinn. 
A lot of fireworks here. Madison in on a shot. Not the best shot, but he follows through, picks the leg up, and he scores two. Big takedown there with five seconds left in this first period. Noah Madison's going to take a 5-4 lead into the second period. Tremendous action there in that first period after a tremendous match at 120 that ended in a pin for Dowling Catholic, which followed another tremendous match at 113 where Johnston's Caden Leonard bumped from 106 to 113 and knocked off Seth Soto 4-2. And that followed a match at 106 where Johnston Shandrell Johnson rallied from down 3-0 to beat Wyatt Hefferon 11-6. Lots of great wrestling here in the lightweights, not to discount the middle and heavier weights that kicked this duel off. We still got some action coming right up next at 32 and 38 for Dallin Catholic with the Frost Twins coming up. Well, we got to get through 126 first, 30 seconds into this second period. Nice little ride here from Noah Madison. Might suck him back to put Dominic Quinn in danger. Covers the hips instead. Noah Madison a 5-4 lead here. Scored a quick takedown, gave up a reversal in two backs, but scored an escape, came back with another takedown before the end of the first period, and that brings us to 5-4 here. Now Madison working on a ride here in this second period. Quinn doing a nice job building his base, but not really able to get to his feet here. Let's see if he can work some hands. Second half of the second period, Noah Madison says, no sir, tries to run a bar. And tries to run it back the other way. Runs back to running a bar, and he's able to flip Quinn over. Quinn smartly rolls through over his shoulders. Avoids the back points. He kicks his leg out using his length, but he doesn't bring his wrist with him. And now Noah Madison racking up back points. He gets the full set of five. Now he's going to try and settle in. Can he get the pin here? I would say he's close. We don't have the best angle here, as you can see, but the ref pulls it anyway. Noah Madison, big pin there at 126 pounds. Three minutes, 39 seconds. Let's take a look at this replay real quick. Noah Madison doing a good job, was trying to figure out which way to run the bar. Ultimately runs it to his right, settles in there on the edge. That's just really smart. Matt Savvy wrestling there from Noah Madison. Gets the pin, six more team points for Johnston. That puts them up 36 to 18. Crucial result there for Johnston as we head into the final three weights here. One hundred and thirty two pounds coming up here for Dowling Catholic, top ranked Evan Frost. and very quickly slide by in for a takedown. For Evan Frost, they're on the edge. Frost slides him out, they'll restart in the center. This is Aiden Honkamp from Johnston due to the applause from the previous match. Wasn't able to hear who Johnson sent out, but it is Aiden Honkamp here at 132 pounds. Evan Frost going to wrestle back on their feet. Just relentless pressure here from Evan Frost. Him and his twin brother Jacob, two standout wrestlers here. Only brand new to the uh, Iowa high school wrestling scene. They only recently moved in here. Both of them three-time state champs from Louisiana. Very credentialed wrestlers nationally, both top 200 recruits in the 2022 senior class. Both of them are headed to the Ivy Leagues Columbia. Academic scholarships out there. But they're going to finish their high school careers here at Dowling Catholic in Iowa's Class 3A. Nice little sweep single there to finish for Evan Frost for a 4-1 lead. So we hit the midway point of this first period. Brains and Braun, the Frost Twins. These two guys are two of 
about 25 seniors currently that are headed to Division I wrestling programs next season. Could perhaps be more as we round out the remainder of the wrestling season. Dowling needs both Evan and Jacob to come up big here. Evan running a bar there on the edge. Excellent stuff there, that's pretty tight. Hong Kong's gonna have his work cut out for him, but able to, hey, belly back out. Ref swipe, looked like he's holding two, gives the two, so that's a 6-1 lead now for Evan Frost. Continues to work on the edge there. They go out of bounds, they will restart in the center. You can see why Evan Frost here, and you'll see it again with his twin brother Jacob, why they are not only considered two of the top wrestling talents here in Iowa since they moved in, but two of the top national talents in the senior class. Very, very credentialed wrestlers here. Actually had a connection with Ryak Finch, Dowling's first year head coach, came up from Louisiana after wrestling with Ryak Finch down there. Now they're here wrestling in Iowa. Into the first period, Evan Frost, a 6-1 to one lead. We're at 132 pounds. Three weights left, but only two matches left. 132 and 138. Dowling Catholic open at 145. So you can tack on another six points to Johnston's team score. That would effectively put this duel out of reach. Evan out quickly, first 10 seconds, gives him a 7-1 lead now. Nice outside step there. Excellent, excellent control there on the double leg. Up nine to one now, 20 seconds into this second period. Not a matter of bonus points when it comes to the Frost Twins, but how many they will score. Nine to one, already a major intact. He'll tack on three more back points for a 12 to one lead once he breaks the lock here. Go out of bounds instead. We will restart in the center. These are the type of guys that you will see on Saturday night, potentially, at the state wrestling tournament. Still a few weeks away from the big dance at Wells Fargo Arena. The girls' state wrestling championships, though, hosted by the Iowa Wrestling Coaches and Officials Association, set for tomorrow at Extreme Arena in Coralville. Close to 700 girls registered and going to be competing at Extreme Arena tomorrow and Saturday. A 1,000 girls wrestling statewide this year. Just excellent stuff for that continued growing movement here in the state of Iowa. Evan Frost here, a 14-2 lead. Going to pick up back points here. This will either end in a pin or a technical fall. And that was some excellent hip action there from Evan Frost. He's going to settle in for the pin here over Aiden Honkamp. Three minutes, 22 seconds there. The pin for Evan Frost on senior night. We're going to take a look at the replay here. Check this out. Ran the bar, had a chicken wing over, but as soon as Hong Kong looked like he was about to lift his hips up, Evan Frost says, no, sir. Floats his hip over, settles in for the pin there. Excellent stuff there for Evan Frost on senior night. Next up, his twin brother, Jacob Frost, ranked number two at 138. Evan Frost ranked number one at 132. Jacob Frost, battle of the Jacobs here. Well, we thought we were going to get a really fun matchup. I'm not sure that that's the case, ladies and gentlemen. Jacob Frost from Dowling Catholic. Ryan King here from Johnston. Thought we were going to perhaps see the Battle of the Jacobs. Jacob Frost and Jacob Helgeson, very talented freshman for Johnston. Instead, Ryan King getting the nod with the duel in hand. Makes sense. Although we always love to see high-profile matchups on Thursday nights here. CISN TV, got a handful of them, a lot of fun matchups here tonight. Thought we might get one more, but them's the breaks, perhaps in the postseason, perhaps even, like I was mentioning before, at Wells Fargo Arena at the state tournament here next month. 
Jacob Frost, though, going to work very quickly up 8-2 to two after the first minute here in this first period. Jacob Frost, they announced during the intros, easiest way to tell these guys apart, if not for their spots in the lineup, is to make them stand side by side. Jacob Frost is 1.63852 two inches taller than his brother. That was from the intros. I'm not that good at math. 11-3 lead now for Jacob Frost. Already striking distance for bonus points. Ryan King looks like he might have a headlock here. This would be something. Jacob Frost, though, staying very calm, takes him the other way, scores two and more. He's going to get the fall here, folks, matter of time. Well, he's got 20 seconds left. Can King continue to fight off? Excellent hip action there from Jacob Frost. Can he get a senior night pin along with his brother? Settling in, we're six seconds left. And that's when the ref calls it a minute and 54 second pin for Jacob Frost. Let's take a look at this replay here really quickly. See him settling in there for the pin. Ryan King does a good job attempting a headlock. Jacob Frost comes right back, throws him the other direction, runs the bar, settles in for the pin. So a pin for the Frost Twins on senior night. But the final score, after a forfeit at 145, going to go to the Johnston Dragons. Final score here, 42 to 30. We're going to take a quick break here. We'll come back to wrap up this duel watching CIML Wrestling on CISN TV. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Our team at DRM and Ford Indianola are committed to giving you an exceptional ownership experience. As a family-owned business, my dad and I are in the dealership every day to ensure you experience the DRM difference. Our core values of hard work, honesty, trust, and integrity are what we build our business on. Experience the difference at the all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. Where you'll actually enjoy doing business. The all-new DRM and Ford Indianola. DRM and Ford. Why do businesses succeed? The Better Business Bureau sees the traits of successful businesses every day. It's not easy, but it is simple. The BBB fosters trust between Iowa businesses and consumers. Visit BBB.org. Central Bank opened its doors in 1877 and has been proud to call Iowa home ever since. For more than a century, our family-owned business has worked hand-in-hand -hand with friends and neighbors across the state to make their dreams a reality. Come visit us at our new location on Hickman and Waukee and see how Central Bank can make it happen for you. Let's cut right to it. Nobody does meat like Fairway. Nobody. And if you're somebody who wants to become a master, we've got hats to fill. Quality pay, choice benefits, premium opportunities. There's more in store for you at Fairway. Welcome back to Dowling Catholic High School, CIML Wrestling on CISN TV. We appreciate you guys tuning in, whether it be on YouTube or IA Russell on Rockfin. I'm Cody Goodwin. Guided you through this evening a 42 to 30 final score here in favor of the Johnston Dragons over Dowling Catholic on senior night. Quick recap of tonight's duel. Johnston taking nine of the 14 matches, including four pins, one win by forfeit, and four crucial victories in a handful of swing matches. At 106, Shandrell Thompson stepping in and beating Wyatt Heffron, rallying from a 3-0 deficit to win 11-6. That allowed Caden Leonard, ranked number four normally at 106, to bump to 113 and knock off Dowling Sev Soto, a top 12 wrestler in his own right, 4-2 thanks to a third period takedown. Another big swing match that took place tonight, 170. Sam Zindel 
five takedowns and an 11-6 win over Adam Townsend, spoiling his senior night. And then another one, big one, Will Scott at 182. 3-1 one win over Caden Marsdo at 182. Four pins and a win by forfeit for Dowling Catholic. Pins from John King, Evan Frost, Jacob Frost, and Ralston Rumley brought them close within this duel. Came as within 27-12, to 12, but Johnston winning the swing matches, scoring their bonus points. Handful of pins from them tonight from Braden Black Orby, um, accepted a forfeit at 160. Another pin from Jackson Brinker at 195. Huge pins as well from Noah Madison at 126 pounds over Dominic Quinn. This was all Johnston, ladies and gentlemen. They, they looked really good tonight. It was an entertaining duel, lots of high-level wrestling, lots of very entertaining matches. Just so happened to go to the Dragons' way tonight. Very, very excellent duel here on Thursday night. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, again, final score, Johnston 42, Dowling Catholic 30. A couple other final scores around the state that thought you guys might find interesting. Urbandale beat Waukee tonight, 45-30. to 30. Then a stunner out in eastern Iowa, Cedar Rapids, Washington, over Cedar Rapids Prairie. 41 to 37, a big pin at 106 for the Warriors to edge the Hawks in that one. A little bit of a surprising result, um, at least to, to one man here in central Iowa. We appreciate you guys tuning in, CISN TV. We appreciate you guys tuning in as well on IA Russell on Rockfin. This was a pleasure to have you along tonight. I am Cody Goodwin. For everybody else here at CISN TV, have a great evening, and we will see you again next week.